Hi guys, welcome to the first part of this series in learning how to loosen up while learning the basics of watercolor so we can create beautiful artwork like these. My name is Claris and I am a watercolor artist that cannot stop painting loose florals of this nature right here. You can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. My links are listed below. Follow me for inspiration and for additional videos where you can learn to create pretty things like this. Let's get right away into the supplies we are using today. So these are the supplies I will be using over the next couple of videos as we start out on our journey of learning loose watercolor for loose florals. I'll be using the same items over and over again and they are all listed below in the description. So to start off, here are my brushes. I am going to be using the Princeton Neptune and Princeton Velvet Touch. Neptune in the number six and Velvet Touch in the number four. I've got my palette here, something very basic. You can use uh, a flat surface or if you've got something, tiny little bowls, that would also be helpful for you to begin. But this palette right here is by Lisi Arts. That's also linked below. For our paper, I'm going to be starting out with this Paul Rubens sketchbook. It is brand new and I think it's the perfect, perfect way to sort of start off, especially if you're new to watercolor and you want to document your progress. It would be best to start off with a new sketchbook and this way you can see your progression and you've got all your lessons in one book. Again, this is also listed below Paul Rubens, this specific sketchbook I love, especially for beginners. I think it's a great start. But again, feel free to use whatever paper you have on hand. You don't have to go with exactly the items I have. Okay, for colors I'm using Mei Ling Set of 48. And this is a brand by Paul Rubens as well. They are spectacular. And I think they make a great beginner's sort of palette because they are so good and so close to my favorite colors, which are White Knights. All right, so that is that. Uh, oh, let's not forget, we need bowls of water handy on the side as well. So here's a quick explanation on the difference between the round number six Neptune and the Velvet Touch number four. The round Neptune is... A more th is a thicker brush that holds more water in comparison to the number four and so it'll give me I guess thicker strokes and so more coverage with less strokes with the number four I absolutely love it it is one of my favorite brushes because of the pointed tip this allows me to get some really beautiful thicks sorry not thicks you can get thicks as well but thins when you need a thin stem or if you need the leaf to sort of trail off into like a nice point, this baby is your friend. Okay, so we're going to start off with mixing some colors. And in today's, in this first lesson, we are focusing on wet on wet technique when it comes to flowers. So I'll be doing a very basic flower. Keep in mind, this is a loose style of painting. So we're keeping things very basic, very simple and allowing the brush to sort of help us create these organic shapes without concentrating too much on it. So making sure that my br brush is nice and damp, we're gonna go ahead and activate some color. I will be using for this exercise a combination of two colors because that's what we're doing wet on wet, which means blending of two different colors. And we're going to be blending in some sky blue and some fresh blue from my mailing palette, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is get some color mixed up over here. So I've got some sky blue handy. Just gonna get some using this and just put that onto the side here. It's a nice bright Turkish sort of color. And then I'm just gonna wash my brush and then get the second color, which is the fresh blue. And mix that on here. 
So what we're going to do is we'll start off with the lighter color, which is the sky blue, and then we'll use the we'll use the second color to highlight certain areas to get that beautiful blend. Okay, so I'm going to keep the shape very, very basic so you can grasp how we can achieve this beautiful gradient effect in watercolor. So I'm going to keep the number four handy because that's what I'll do for the darker tone, which is the fresh blue. I'll use the number four to add it, add it on to our sky blue. Okay, so using the number six, I'm going to get some of the sky blue and you can see that it's a very muted tone right now. It's more like 80% water. 20% color. I'm going to get a little bit more color. And then using this number six, we're just going to hold the brush at an angle, kind of holding it over here so we get looser strokes, not all the way here because that's really being too specific. And you can actually see in your painting strokes when you're being too specific. So holding the brush like this, I'm just going to go ahead and create this shape like this. And I'm just waving the brush around. And then going downward. Again, notice how I'm holding my brush. I'm creating this sort of downward shape. And I've used the, whole, the full spans of my brush to sort of create this. Okay, so something simple like that. And then taking in our number four, we're gonna go in, get some of the color Make sure your brush is nice and damp. Get more color if you want. Uh, we need the um, percentage of color, the ratio of color to be higher than the water. So slightly darker. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the center first. And I'm doing, using the tip of my brush, I'm lightly doing this. And you can immediately see this beautiful ring of a gradient sort of just blooming into our blue. Now, one thing to sort of keep in mind, gorgeous, this is gorgeous. So if you're doing a flower, that's pretty much how you get a blend, okay? Using this technique, wet on wet technique for flowers. If you wanna distribute this color in different areas of the flower, you can sort of go to the edges and just put in a little bit of these strokes in there, maybe even add a line in there if you want to show um, a division in the petals, so to speak. And you can see how it immediately makes things pop because there's a color difference, right? You can have some sort of starting from the very beginning and pushing it downward. So take this time and this technique that I've shown you to sort of experiment and see what you're able to get in terms of, I guess, uh, color variety and darkness and lightness and such. Okay, now if I wanted to really intensify the center, I just take more color and I add more to the center. Now one thing to also keep in mind is that you get this blooming effect if and only if your area is still damp. So if your area has dried up and it is not damp anymore, you will not get this at all. And in next month, next month's videos, we are going to be focusing on wet on dry technique and this will come up over there. Okay, so use this technique, practice tons of flowers like this, and then join me next week for part two in this series. So this is my simple technique and simple exercise on the wet on wet technique when it comes to flowers. You can use this technique for so many other paintings, I guess painting so many different items rather, um, but I hope this broke this down fairly simply for you. And if you end up doing this, I would love to see what you do. Please try this out in different colors as well. I think it would make a beautiful, beautiful picture, especially if you're doing flowers as opposed to just basic shapes like squares and circles and such and tag me on social media i would love to see your work i have listed my my instagram and facebook handles below and also if you love this video please hit that like button and also the subscribe button as it really does help my channel grow thanks guys for watching and i will catch you next week for another continuation on our loose floral study 
on the wet on wet technique.